Today we're going to study circles, and circles are set off into their own lesson because they're completely unlike anything we've looked at so far. As a matter of fact, in ancient Greece, they thought the circle was the symbol of perfection. They thought the circle was a perfect symbol. Now, so far we've studied all different kinds of polygons, and now what's different between a polygon and a circle? Well, a polygon is made up of what? Line segments, right? And so we have angles, because with a line segment, there's a distinct starting point and stopping point. Do we have that with the circle? Where's the start? Where's the stop? I don't know. And we don't have lines. So today are going to be a lot of definitions, not as much computation. I'll throw in a little analytical geometry at the end just to mess you up, because I like to. And, but a lot of stuff more is just memory recall. So our first couple of definitions. First of all, we need to know what a circle is. A circle is the set of all points in a plane that are a given distance from a fixed point in the plane. What that means is that's called my center. All of these are a continuous set of points that are the same distance away from that fixed point. The fixed point is the center of the circle. And the distance from the center to all these continuous points is called the radius. The radius also can be denoted by a line. How many radii do I have in a circle? Hmm? No, how many radii could I draw in that circle? Is there a limit? No, there's an infinite number of them. I could swing it all the way around. It's going to be the same distance. There's an infinite number of radii. Well, before we get to that, we know what a circle is now and how it is formed, actually formed from, be from the center. The circle is formed from the center, and that distance is called the radius. We need some, some other terms. We need some other vocabulary. First one is chord. A chord is a line segment that connects two edges of the circle, or that touches. That's not a good definition. Touches the circumference or the outer edge. I don't know what word. What would be a good word to use? Oh, they say endpoints on the edge of the circle. Touches the circle at two points on the edge or something like that. So it has to touch the outside of the circle at two points. That's what a chord is. This is an example of a chord. Right there. There's a chord there. Here's one here. I can do a few more. Here's a chord here. Here's a chord there. Now, I talked about the radius before. Is the radius a chord? No, why not? It, it, yeah, don't touch two, it doesn't touch two sides. That's right. I paraphrased. It, touch, it goes from the center to the edge. That's important to remember. We're going to use that later in the lesson. The radius is not a chord. Make sure you put that somewhere. Now, the diameter, the diameter is a chord. It's a special case of a chord. The diameter is a chord that goes through the center of the circle. Center. So if it doesn't go through the center of the circle, it's just a plain chord. But there is that special case. Of chord that goes right through my center, just like that. Touches on both edges. There's my diameter. Has to go through that center point if it's a diameter. All right. Next one, we're going to talk about some angles and arcs now.
The central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. Hence, central angle. This is an angle whose center, oh, whose vertex is at the center. So in this circle that you've been given, what's the name of one central angle? Angle BDC, BDC. That's angle BDC. The other one, of course, would be ADB. That would be the other central angle. The next one is an arc. An arc is a section of the circumference. The circumference, of course, being the distance around the outside of the circle. So an arc, if I'm looking at this circle, could be anything from this all the way around, just as long as it doesn't touch on the other side. Could be 359 degrees, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. It's still an arc. It's just that, just as long as it's a touch shy of 360 degrees, then it's an arc. There are three different kinds of arcs. Semicircle, major arc, minor arc, major arc. And they all are relative to how many degrees it measures. So how many degrees are in a circle? 360 degrees, right? Semicircle would be half. It is. It's a very technical, it is, it's 100, it measures 180 degrees. But technically, the, the um, definition of a semicircle is an arc whose ends whose endpoints are the endpoints of the diameter. So they have to touch the diameter. So here's the semicircle right here. And the semicircle would be arc AC. The semicircle is an arc whose endpoints or that of the diameter. That means they're the same. So in this semicircle, the semicircle of this is arc AC. So to denote an arc, that's what you form over the letters. When it was a line segment, it was just a straight line. Now we're just making arcs. A minor arc is an arc that is less than a semicircle. So it's less than how many degrees? Nope, less than a semicircle. 180. So it's an arc less than the semicircle. So it's less than 180 degrees. That's what it is. And then a major arc would be, yeah, it'd be greater than the semicircle. So it's greater than 180 degrees. So as I look at these, when you have arcs, they have three, you have three choices. Either it's smaller than that semicircle, which makes it minor, bigger than that semicircle, which makes it major, or it is the semicircle, which makes it the semicircle. It's rather, rather easy correlation to make. All right. When I put the M in front of it, that means the measure the measure of the arc. All right. And the arc is pretty simple. To find the measure of any arc, 
the measure of an arc is equivalent to the measure of the central angle it intercepts, which means this. If I have my minor arc LM, this right here, do you see how if I extend this to go and form a central angle, do you see how this central angle is 75 degrees? Does everybody see that? That means this arc is equal to that as well. This section is also 75 degrees. It is equivalent to the arc it intercepts, which means if you extend for that central angle and you get the radii, the arc formed from it, those degrees are the same. So minor arc MLM, the measure is 75 degrees. Could I now figure out, since I know that that's 75, could I figure out the major arc LPM? So LPM is this right here. Notice we had to name it with the P in the middle because that point was on the circumference. Major arc LPM. Well, if this one is 75, what's this? How many degrees are in a, tr in a circle? 360. You're right, Jeremy. And then what? Subtract 75 because you know that this part is 75 degrees. 285 degrees. That's correct, sir. So just simple subtraction, and I figure out, I know I have 75. I know there's 360 total. I take away what I know. What's left is that major arc there, 285. So, so far, like I said, not a lot of heavy-duty um, uh, computation, you know, just simple subtraction and stuff like that. The hard part's going to be recognizing what you have and knowing what you have. All right, here's the hardest part of this lesson, and this is the part that messes students up every year. It's called an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex, so the point, lies on the circle, the circumference of the circle, and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So an example of an inscribed angle is right here. It is angle ACB. Is an inscribed angle because its vertex is here on the circumference of the circle and both of its legs are chords. All right. How about this one? Let's call that point D. Angle DBC. Is that an inscribed angle? Gotcha. This is the hard part. You might see an upcoming test question eventually. Why is this not an inscribed angle? It is off that dot. But if it says it's... Well, all, you mean all the way down? Well, it goes this way. So there's straight lines. That's angle DBC right there. Line DB ain't a chord. That's right. It's not. What is DB? It's not a chord. It's a radius. What does the definition say it has to be? Chords. Radius is not a chord. Remember me saying that a couple minutes ago? I said it. I could even stop this in a few minutes and play me back saying that just to prove that I said it. But I did. <laughs> but I, did. I said that's, you're going to need to know that radius is not a chord, and this is why. This would be a good place for a trick question on a test. Angle DBC is not. Because DB is a radius. Well, the interesting, interesting thing about an inscribed angle, I don't know, not really interesting, but something you have to know is that the measure of the arc it intercepts, so if you look at our definite inscribed angle here, which is angle ACB. This is an inscribed angle. The measure of the arc it intercepts, so if you extend the chords, it goes between A and B, right? So that's minor arc AB. The measure of Arc AB 
equals one half the measure of this angle. A C B. So when you look at an inscribed angle, the mar the arc that intercepts it on the circumference, it's one half of that angle. So if I told you this was I don't know forty degrees right here, what would the measure of this angle be? Or did I do that backwards? Maybe the angle is one half. No, I did it right. It's one half. The measure of the arc. Yeah. So what would this be? Did I do it backwards? Yeah, it would be twenty. I'll make sure I'm saying it right. Measure of the inscribed angle is one half the measure of the arc. I said it backwards. I said it backwards. The measure of the arc, measure of this angle is one half of that. So I got the half on the wrong side. So one half times the measure of the arc. So if I if I know the angle, how do I get the arc? Not times a half, but to, uh, by two. So if this is forty, this is eighty. And I I. When I looked at it, I said, no way could that be 20 degrees. That's too much room on the circle, on the circumference. So, given either one of these, you can find the other one. So if I was given this was 80, like half of it's 40. So this will be twice as much as that. Well, where can I use that? You can use that in a very annoying problem just like this. If you can do this one, you are good to go for this section. In circle O. Arc AD is equal to arc CD. Find the measures of the angles of the quadrilateral ABCD. So I want to find the measures of all these angles. I want to know this one and this one. So I know this arc and this arc are equivalent, which means I can figure out that angle B is congruent to angle A, right? Because remember that first one I looked at? When you look at an arc, let me go back, right there, it's equivalent to the central angle. We're using that one. All right, let's, so figure those, let's figure those out. Those are actually inscribed angles. They're not central angles. That would have made it much too easy for us. Well, I know that I have 360 degrees in a circle. And I know from A, arc AB is 132 degrees. And I know that arc BC is 82 degrees. What else do I know? Those two are equal. Plus X plus X. That means I have this. 360 degrees equals, is that 214? Plus 2X. Bless you. Subtract 214, get 146 equals 2x, divide by 2. So x equals 73 degrees. So each one of these arcs, there to there, and there to there, even though it doesn't look like it, are 73 degrees each. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they're both equal to it. They're congruent. So I, what I did is I took the number of degrees left in the circle and cut it in half. All right. Angle B, if you look at angle B here, it goes from there to there. That's an inscribed angle, isn't it? The arc it intercepts is 146 degrees, which means its angle is half of that. So... Arc AC is 146, which means angle B, which is the central angle that intercepts it, is half of that. So 146 divided by 2, you're back to the 73. So angle B is 73 degrees. 
All right, one of them's down. We're in a quadrilateral, right? So I have how many degrees total when I'm done? 360. So if I find three of them, the last one I can just add them up and subtract from 360. So that's the first one done. What am I going to do now over and over and over again? Do I know all the angle measures? Do I have a bunch of inscribed angles here? I'm just going to repeat this process two other times. Because I know each one of these angles now. Now I'm just going to pick out different ones. Let's see. Angle C goes from there to there. It's an inscribed angle. Here's the arc for that. So it's 73 plus 132 for angle C. 73 plus 132, that's uh, 205 degrees. So the inscribed angle is half of that. So half of 205. I figures I get this older part. 205 divided by 2. 102.5. So that means angle C, 102.5 degrees. What one do you want to do next? Taylor, pick one. Either A or D. All right. Taylor wants to find angle A, so I'm going to identify the chords. There and there. Can you see that, or is the red not clear enough? It changed to green. There. Oh, that didn't do me any good. There. All right, there's angle A there. So what two degrees do I need to put together, Taylor? I'll come to the arc. What two degrees do I have? 82 and 73. Add those two together, I get 155. So what do I do with that 155 now? You do divide it by 2 because it's half, right? Th that angle is half of the arc. So 155 divided by 2 equals 77 and a half. So angle A is 77 and a half degrees, which is nice because that I had 0.5 degrees there. So do I need to find and use my inscribed angle to find D? What can I do now? Add them up, subtract from 360. You're going to get the same thing either way. So to add them up, 73 plus 77.5 plus 102.5. Add those up, subtract from 360. So I have 253 degrees. Now I'm going to take away from 360. I get 107 degrees. Now I found all those angles. Do they look right? Is that, that's an acute angle, right? That's an acute angle, and I have two obtuse. So I did it correct, and they all add up to 360. So I did it right. This is the analytical geometry part of the circle lesson. You're going to use this inscribed angle stuff. Find the arc from the endpoints, the measure of the arc, and cut it in half. That gives you your central angle. That gives you your angle of the inscribed angle. 228, 229, 1 to 26, skip 21. And then if you want to do number 23 for extra credit, you can. That is up to you. 1 to 26, skip 21. 23 is for extra credit.